Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Norwich City. I hope you're all doing very well indeed. Uh, back for a match preview today. Norwich City return to action at Carrow Road against Brighton and Hove Albion this Saturday. Um, really excited to preview this game, actually, and a big thanks to One Football for enabling us to produce these match preview and review videos throughout this season. I headed over to the One Football app. Link to download it is in the description. Um, and I always like the who will win feature where people can vote. 25% um, of people have voted for a Norwich City win, 7% the draw, 68%, a, uh, a resounding majority, uh, think that Brighton will win this. Uh, that's collected from 9,500 votes to a, to a large sample size. In terms of Brighton, um, a relatively strong start to the season. They're sixth in the division on 14 points, but I think that's slightly misleading. Um, because the, the run of fixtures they've had from the start has been relatively easy. Burnley, Watford, Everton, Brentford, uh, Leicester, Palace, Arsenal. A couple of games in there that they were probably expecting to win. Uh, but two points a game after seven games is an impressive start. Uh, and I think the form that they carried throughout the back end of the last Premier League season has kind of rolled over. They weren't performing... Um, to the numbers that they were putting up. They were kind of underperforming compared to that data. This season, it's almost the other way around, but they've started solidly. In terms of Norwich City, I think this is probably one of the most well-timed international breaks of our lives. Um, it came at the perfect time. It came off the back of a, a positive result against Burnley. I think the, the joy about that result, and I've said it before, yes, we didn't win and yes, we didn't score, but it feels like we have something tangible to build off now, a foundation to build from. The clean sheet, the point, a, a positive defensive performance away from home. They are all ticks in the boxes in terms of things we needed. Of course, the other thing now is a win and we need to score, a, we need to see a, a flourishing attacking performance. And I think hopefully with time that will come, but at least we have something now. We've got through the international break. I am filming this prior to Daniel Farker's press conference. From what I'm aware, there have been no um, notable injuries throughout that international break. And it's actually been a positive break for, uh, for some of our players as well. Billy Gilmore has been exceptional for Scotland, who are doing really well in their World Cup qualification um, period. Uh, Timi Puki has broken Finland's all-time record goal scorer. He's got ahead of Yari Lippmann. So a huge moment for him and he scored a couple of goals during the international break um so all in all a positive time and of course the fact that there's been no injuries i hope my fingers are crossed that's a really positive thing it's been a really intense start for Norwich city i don't think we've necessarily had the time to adjust and yes this is me making excuses it's completely Norwich city's responsibility that they maybe didn't get business done early enough um to be able to bed in these new players from different leagues and different teams and different nationalities. Like that will take time and that is down to, to Norwich City for a certain um, level. But it does feel as if things are starting to gel. I think my only worry, well, I've got lots of worries about this Norwich team, but the, the biggest worry is it, it still doesn't feel as if Daniel Fark knows his strongest 11, both personnel-wise and formation-wise. I think... The five at the back formation with your three centre-backs and your kind of two wing-backs almost do have positives. I think your new list looked really well suited to it. I think Aaron's has that threat going forwards a lot more in that formation, which is really positive. I just think with that, we look disjointed in terms of the midfield, just don't look able enough to, to connect play. And I think that's a, a real issue when you're when you're trying to attack teams and also trying to get out of um, lengthy periods of sustained pressure because it just keeps coming back at you. And I think the Burnley game was was the perfect setup for that formation because a lot of the Burnley uh, attacks are, are long balls forward and, and aerially you have to be really strong. And when you've got Hanley, Gibson and Kabak, you're going to win the majority of headers. So it worked in that game. I just don't know if that translates to home games against the Brighton that will like to keep the ball on the floor, that will like to hold possession for long periods. And I also don't think it's well suited to the to the mood at Carrow Road. And you might be saying, oh, Jack, what, what do you mean? That's kind of fluffy. 
Norwich City fans at Carrow Road taking out that brilliant championship season because the fans weren't there have now essentially seen 12 consecutive months of really poor Premier League performances and what they want to see and I'm speaking from a personal standpoint but I think also as a collective number of fans we want to see a performance that gives us hope going forward and I don't think we've seen that there have been elements of performances that have been there maybe a 15 minute spell against Leicester Uh, and a 10-minute chunk against Watford. I can't pick out too many other performances where we've looked like we're genuinely going to pepper the opposition goal. But I think we need that. And I I feel like we also have the players to play the 4-2-3-1, which has been Daniel Farker's most successful formation by a long way in his, what, four seasons at the football club. So I think we need to tinker with that. And I think once we get that, we do have the personnel to at least pop fights in in Premier League football matches. I I haven't seen enough from Rashica or Sargent or Jollis yet and I think probably the latter of them three hasn't been given the opportunity to display his um, the the, the kind of attributes that we signed him for. Um, But that that Burnley result just gives me positivity and I think that's what we need both as fans and and players um, at the moment. We needed something to build on, and I think we we do have that now. Um, of course, that needs to be backed up. The fixture list throughout the rest of October and November looks slightly more favourable, which is, is is beneficial to Norwich City, and they'll be looking to build on that further. Um, so all in all, confident going into this Brighton game. Um, they've been good this season, as I mentioned at the start of the video, but we need something. I think this game is actually bigger than the Watford game. Um, I look at this and I think if we can back this up after the, the the Burnley game and get a positive result here, we really do have something to cheer about because there's there's other teams in the Premier League who are yet to win this season, including Newcastle. I'm almost not going to mention team selections at this point because I think I've named every possible player um, that could possibly play this season in some kind of formation. I'm going to leave that to Daniel Farker. All I'm saying is I think we need a positive attacking performance to build on what we've seen defensively against Burnley and a performance to cheer about at Carrow Road because I genuinely think football fans are relatively um, fickle when it comes to memory and all it takes is a, is a win for the mood to change, at least in the short term. And at the moment, we are very much looking at short-term wins. So there we go. Let me know what you think ahead of this Brighton game. Really looking forward to getting back to Carrow Road. I feel refreshed and rejuvenated ahead of hopefully a positive result. Thanks very much for watching uh, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.